Good afternoon. We'll call this public hearing to order. This is a public hearing uh, conducted by the Judiciary Committee of the House of Delegates to consider input regarding House Bill 2519, which is titled the Campus Self-Defense Act, also sometimes referred to as Campus Carry. Uh, we have copies of the bill on the front table here to my right. If you wish to look at the bill, I just caution you that the bill is, has not been considered by the committee. We will plan to take it up sometime shortly after the hearing, probably either Wednesday or Friday, depending on the information that's developed during this hearing and what needs to be incorporated into changes. So that, that should let you know that the bill might change in its form based on discussions among the interested parties and the input that we receive as well as the committee process. Um, I would remind all of you who signed up that this, uh, this, this hearing is being streamed outside to millions of people throughout the universe. So I'd ask that you please conduct yourself accordingly. We'd ask you refrain from any outbursts, applause, or anything like that. That also tends to uh, impinge on others' time, and we do have quite a few people who signed up to speak. We want to try to give everyone about two minutes, okay? So try to conform to that two minutes. You'll see at the podium here there's a box with a red light on top. You will get a signal about 15 seconds before your two minutes is up uh, to give you an opportunity to wrap up, and we would ask you not to uh, uh, carry over because that does uh, it's not courteous to the other members who wish to speak. We try to alternate uh, between um, those who signed up in favor of the bill and those who signed up opposed. They're, the numbers are a little bit disproportionate, so we'll probably try to rotate about, about three people that signed up for or opposed uh, to the bill and for every one that signed up in favor of the bill. Um, we would ask you to, if you can, remain after the session is over in case members of our committee wish to ask you individual questions. We will not have time to take questions as you make your presentation, but uh, if you're able to stay over, uh, uh, it would be helpful for some of our members who may want to follow up on some of the information that, um, that you provide. If you have written materials that you wish to file for the cons consideration of the committee, if you would file them with the clerk up here, who's the gentleman to my left, then we'll make sure they get distributed to the committee. All right, and as I call your name, if you would, I'm going to try to call two or three at the same time. So if you would come up and take seats along here to the side of the podium so we don't waste a lot of time with you get it coming, back, coming back and forth. So we will begin with the first... Um, Two people would be Officer David Eldridge and Dr. Sarah Beasley. Officer Eldridge, you'll be the first to speak. Members of the committee, on behalf of Dr. Bogus, Chief Mark Stella, and Concord University, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, in regards to this bill, um, from us at a law enforcement standpoint. A uh, little background on me real fast. Um, I'm a retired member of West Virginia State Police. I've been at Concord University for since 2017 and um, many other positions over the years. I've been a police officer, a law enforcement official, for over 30 years. And I've had the opportunity to work all over the world as a law enforcement officer. In reviewing uh, the requirements that this bill is going to have on the universities, uh, particularly with Concord University. Um, in order to, for us to comply with the security requirements, as is written in the bill, uh, such as um, metal detectors, electronic forms of uh, uh, security, uh, it is essentially because of um, the facilities that Concord has, it's going to require the university to triple its police department in size. We estimate that um, overall that this bill would, the initial first year of it would cost us approximately uh, $726,000 to implement the security measures that would be required to comply with the, uh, with the bill as written. And 
this is the breakdown would basically be 13 additional officers we'd have to hire, which is basically we currently have the authorized strength of seven police officers and two security officers for a total of nine. Uh, we would actually have to hire an additional 13 officers to meet the uh, armed security requirements of it. We would need multiple uh, metal detectors, which currently we don't have any at Concord. These are going to cost approximately $27,000. Uh, other uh, handheld metal detectors, the uh, wands, uh, over $2,000. Um, and this does not include the cost associated with uh, labor installation to install these material costs. And additionally, officers will have to be trained. One of the other issues that we currently have, which all police departments nationwide in, in this state too, from the state police down to the smallest municipality, is finding qualified people that we can hire. Um, Excuse it, me, Officer Eldridge, would you wrap up, please? Yes. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. As stated, um, I'd like to file these for the committee to review later and appreciate you uh, for the time you give me. Thank you. The next to presenter will be Dr. Sarah Beasley, and she'll be followed by Dr. Sarah Anderson. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of our West Virginia colleges and universities about campus carry. My name is Sarah Beasley. I'm Dean of Students at Concord University and past president of the West Virginia Organization of Student Affairs Officers. I'm here to speak briefly on student wellness, safety, and mental health and the risks campus carry poses to our students. This is by no means an argument against the constitutional right to bear arms. Instead, it is about protecting our young people, our students, and our dedicated faculty and staff who provide educational and life-changing opportunities to the students of West Virginia. Mental health is the number one issue in our state and nationally on college campuses. Our counseling centers are overwhelmed. Last spring, Concord and other West Virginia institutions participated in a survey called the National College Health Assessment. We should all be alarmed that almost one in four of our West Virginia college students have seriously considered suicide at some point in their life. 12% have actually attempted suicide. I'm thankful those attempts were not successful and that they are now pursuing higher education to become productive citizens of our state. These rates tend to be higher at institutions that serve a greater number of economically disadvantaged students because often with poverty comes a higher number of traumatic experiences. We know that suicide is the second leading cause of death among young people. And the majority, 80% of these young people, kill themselves with a gun. Suicide is often an impulsive decision. Easy access to guns will likely result in more attempts and more attempts being successful. We know that college students and students in that age range are also more likely to engage in other high-risk behaviors, such as binge drinking, drug use, fighting, the safety of our students is priority number one, and remarkably, our Concord students do feel safe on campus. In our recent survey, 98% said so. However, in a recent Student Government Association meeting at Concord, students said they would feel less safe on campus if students were allowed to carry guns because they were more afraid of accidental shootings from fellow students than a random act of violence. Our Student Government Association unanimously passed a resolution opposing campus carry. It's for these reasons and other reasons you'll hear today, increased likelihood of suicide, the delicate mental health of some young adults, the escalation of violent conflict, accidental discharge, and confusion in tactical situations that we ask you to give this legislation careful consideration. Thank you, Dr. Beasley. Dr. Sarah Anderson, she will be followed by Taylor Giles. Good afternoon. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, thank you for the hearing today. My name is Dr. Sarah Anderson. I'm a professor of education at West Virginia University. I'm here to speak out against the campus carry law. 
First, as a teacher and professor, such a policy would only limit freedom of speech and bring intimidation into the classroom. I teach numerous students each year on sensitive topics, often controversial, often heated. Should students, faculty, and staff have the ability to carry a firearm into the classroom, implicit or explicit threats or intimidation could reduce our ability to effectively teach and engage our students. It will reduce the quality of education. Second, I'm an expert in adolescent development. I have my PhD in child development. Adolescence doesn't end at 18. Part of the brain that regulates our emotional regulation and self-regulation, the frontal cortex, our ability to make those logical decisions and rein in rash decisions, that doesn't stop developing until our mid-20s. As we also heard, uh, young adulthood is a, unfortunately the leading cause of death in young adulthood is suicide. With the readily, if firearms were to be more readily accessible to students at universities, given their limited, their capacity to make decisions and often hash, harsh and rash decisions, it might make the incidence of suicide increase. Though this bill contain, currently contains exemptions for sole occupancy offices, which I have, that does, not, does that not seem unfair toward graduate assistants, office assistants, receptionists who do not? And what funds will cover the cost of enforcing it? As we've already heard, those funds could be extensive. It sounds like an unfunded mandate. West Virginia University does not need open carry. It will put our students, faculty, and staff, it will put me at risk. I urge you to strongly reconsider it and to vote against it. Thank you, Dr. Ad Anderson. Taylor Giles will be followed by Micah Weglinski. Members of the House Judiciary Committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak on campus carry today. Uh, my name is Taylor Giles, and I'm a student at West Virginia University. Um, so campus carry provides a real and legitimate cost-effective solution to violent crimes on college campuses. In the, at the University of Kansas, um, they saw a 50% decrease in assaults, a substantial decrease in violent crime, and a 13% decrease in the number of total crimes committed the year after campus carry was passed, according to an article in the Washington Examiner. Firearms are a part of the West Virginia identity. Our state's flagship, flagship institution has a mascot that carries a gun. In West Virginia, it is not expressly illegal to carry a firearm on campus. However, universities across the state have adopted the policy of expelling or firing students or university employees caught exercising their Second Amendment rights. The standard approach of banning guns sets a dangerous course that, even, that should even worry the left. Every other right enumerated in the Bill of Rights has been incorporated on college campuses using the Supreme Court case Tinker v. Des Moines, with the exception of the Second Amendment. But according to Tinker v. Des Moines, students' rights do not stop when they step on this uh, campus boundary. As a state-run facility, West Virginia University and the Board, Board of Governors has a no, have no rational reasoning or interest in taking away the rights of students, especially when it's not expressly illegal to carry on campus. The only times a vote have been conducted with students regarding campus carry on WVU's campus, students voted in favor of campus carry both times. Why should an unelected body who cannot be held accountable for their constituents be able to tell students what rights they're entitled to and what rights they're not entitled? Without any rational reasoning for universities to take away the right to bear arms, there is no precedent stopping universities from requiring students to house police in their dorms, taking due process away, or worse yet, censoring speech on college campuses. According to the Director of Office of Student Conduct at West Virginia University, there has never been a student prosecuted for carrying a concealed firearm on campus as of the spring 2018 semester. West Virginia University is bound to not be alone in this analysis. However, there is no way to tell who is, who is a student and who is not on campus, making this current rule unenforceable. Instead of permitting students a basic human right of protection, colleges across the state are impeding students' ability to protect themselves against legitimate threats. Op opponents of campus carry argue that, campus, that college campuses are inundated with drugs, alcohol, and students with psychological conditions that would make firearms on campus much more dangerous. Those issues are still present, if not more common, after leaving campus property where firearms are already legal. One of West Virginia University's claims is that they will lose revenue over the bill from out-of-state enrollment. That's simply untrue, according to the other states that have adopted campus carry. To members of the West Virginia Legislature, members of the House Judiciary Committee, 
A vote against House Bill 2519 is a vote against student safety and individual rights on college campuses outlined by the Constitution of West Virginia and the United States of America. Thank you, Mr. Giles. Michael Wiglinski, I hope I got that right, followed by Ash Bray. Chairman Schott, thank you for this opportunity to voice my opinion. Members of the audience, I know many of you feel very strongly about this issue, and I know I'm not going to change your minds about it. Uh, one thing that I would like for you to know that I respect, my, I'm offering you my opinions on this respectfully, and I hope you will take them as such. My name is Micah Weglinski. I'm from Morgantown, West Virginia, and uh, I'm a gun owner. I'm a hunter. I like to fish. I worked as a whitewater raft guide. Uh, I do everything there is that we can do outdoors. It's one of the reasons why I live in this great state. Um, I've been teaching my children about gun safety and the sport of shooting, and I've actually introduced some of my non-gun owning friends to firearm safety and, and shooting as well. Um, I didn't have a problem with uh, last legislative session where we passed the uh, constitutional carry, so you could carry uh, permitless. Um, I think that's well within your rights. Um, I do want to say that when we walked into the People's House today, Everybody here walk through security. You walk through a metal detector. And guns are not prohibited, are prohibited here, except for our fine law enforcement officers that are here. And that's for a reason, because in the people's house, we want to be able to have a free exchange of ideas without intimidation, without fear. That's what our college campuses are. We want to have a free exchange of ideas without intimidation and without fear. I support the Second Amendment, and I also support all the other amendments. I know that many of you here are Second Amendment supporters, and I would like to offer a challenge to you. As hard as you fight to protect our Second Amendment rights, fight for the First Amendment right, fight for the Third Amendment right, fight for the Fourth Amendment right, and all the way up. Because if we can do that, we can truly respect the Constitution, and we can truly be a great country. So. With that being said, Chairman Schott, thank you for the opportunity to voice my opinion, and I urge you to vote no on this bill. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you. We are here to be followed by Ash Bray, and he will be, she will be followed by Sam Hickman. Hi, my name is Ash Bray. I'm a former student at WVU. Um, please, please pull the microphone oh. a little closer. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so statistically speaking, men are more likely to conceal and carry more so than women and people within the queer community. I believe that campus carry could lead to more harm among women and the LGBTQ community, ranging from attacks to sexual assault. Public colleges in Colorado were forced to allow campus carry and rape increased 36%. In Utah, stats have fluctuated within the last five years from 6.6 .6 to 14%, while the national average has slowly been decreasing. It's clear that an increase in guns on campus does not lead to reduced rates of, of attacks on women and the queer community. As a survivor of sexual assault, which occurred on campus, I'm disgusted that pre, uh, previous and current students are being used to advance a political agenda. The proponents of this bill might as well say just what they're alluding to. If you didn't do anything in your power to stop an assault, it's your problem. And haven't we heard enough of that? The proponents of Campus Carry wanted to help female and queer students. They'd invest in preventative cultural change initiatives. They'd reach out to survivor advocacy organizations. They'd assist in creating a college environment where women and queers are heard, not because of a gunshot ringing across campus, but because of what they have to say. If those supporting this bill want to protect students in their community, I'm urging you to invest in preventative care and mental health resources. Uh, I would like to ask my delegates to please consider this voting no on this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bray. Sam Hickman followed by Zach Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. My name is Sam Hickman. I'm the Executive Director of the West Virginia Chapter of the National Association of Social Workers. You know, when a bill raises in your mind the rhetorical question, what could go wrong? It should be a sign that it's not really a good idea. Introducing weapons into a setting in which young people are on their own for the first time is probably not a wise decision. College-age youth are exploring their relationships to and their tolerance for alcohol for the first time. They're exploring complex and highly emotional human interactions, things that can be very confusing and volatile in the young mind. 
Brain science tells us that the prefrontal cortex, which oversees impulse control, is not fully developed until probably age 20 or later. And if there were no other reason that this is a bad idea, it would be that West Virginia's rate of youth suicide is already high. What could go wrong? Too much. Too much to fathom. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Hickman. Zach Campbell, followed by Karen Limery. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Dr. Zachary Campbell. Many delegates may recognize me as having been around the Capitol. Just to be clear, I'm not a lobbyist, not paid to be here, I'm a private citizen, clinical pharmacist by trade, and an active member of the West Virginia Citizens Defense League. While there have been a lot of people saying what this bill is, I want to tell you what it isn't. This bill is not saying that every student who's admitted to a university or college is going to be handed a firearm as soon as they are, arrive on campus. It's not saying that we change what is already allowed by law on public college and university campuses. That's right, it's already legal. Any adult who's paid the state a fee, undergone an FBI background check, taken and successfully passed a concealed carry course, and applied for and received their concealed carry permit, is already legally allowed to carry anywhere on any public college or university campus. More than 20% or one in five adults in the state already has a concealed carry permit. 90% of our universities are comprised of in-state residents. I hate to break it to universities and security, but firearms are already on our campuses. So why this bill? The administration of publicly funded universities and colleges should not be able to tell responsible adults who have a concealed carry permit and have chosen to become a student that they will be expelled for exercising their right to self-defense that by law the state has already granted them. That simply isn't right. The FBI says that concealed carry holders are the most law-abiding demographic in the country, yet university law enforcement would have you believe that they need to secure every building with metal detectors, that they're going to need an untold number of new officers. Why? Universities have firearms on campus now. In fact, they're even legally allowed in any university stadium or sporting venue and do not violate NCAA rights or rules. I say these university administrators, and respectfully to all the uniformed officers that are here on duty, that they should simply stick to the job that they do best. Install more intercom poles, blue flashing lights on top. After all, isn't that what they have historically said is sufficient to protect students from harm. I urge the House to discuss this bill in judiciary and vote yes on Bill 2519. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Campbell. Karen Limery, followed by Jim McKay. Hi, I'm Karen Limery. I'm a retired fifth grade educator from Montegalia County, and I'm basically confused by this bill. I, I don't understand the purpose of it other than people just being able to use their constitutional right to carry a gun. I looked at this bill in three ways, as an educator, as a parent, and as a woman. As an educator, I could tell you, point blank, I would not be willing to teach at an educational establishment that allowed open carry. I would not want to have students in my classroom that had a gun. As a parent, I would not allow my child to attend a university that allowed students in the classroom with a gun. And as a woman, I would not want to be in a situation where I would have the added stress of intimidation from a man, a male, sitting next to me with a gun. I simply ask you to keep guns out of classrooms of public education and higher learning. There is absolutely no reason for it at all. Thank you, Ms. Lemery. Jim McKay, followed by Tara Beth Brumfield. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jim McKay. I'm the State Director of Prevent Child Abuse West Virginia, which is a project of Team for West Virginia Children. And I am also the father of a rising college freshman this year. I'm 
honored to speak and offer uh, my opposition to House Bill 2519 on behalf of my son, Jake, who is considering the most important decision of his life, where he goes for college and university. He has been accepted to many colleges. He's a top of his class. He's in Hancock County Schools, and he's got lots of opportunities. And I don't want those opportunities to be hindered because of fear of his safety. We know that families who battle depression and access to lethal firearms increases the likelihood of suicide. I battle depression. I have battled suicidal ideation in my own life. It runs in our family, our extended family. I do not want my son to become a statistic at his own hand or a classmate's hand. There is no exception in this legislation for dorms. How does he live in close proximity with a roommate that may have bad body odor, may collect the wrong thing and not shower enough? That's one thing. You expect that when you're a college freshman, but you don't expect to have someone with concealed firearm nearby when they may be battling their own mental illness my son, thankfully, does not have signs of this, but we just don't know what we don't know. My father was a captain in the U.S. Marine Corps, and he, on his deathbed a year ago, mentioned that he was thankful he did not have access to a firearm when he was at the very end because he was in so much pain that he didn't know what he might do if it were available. Please protect our children, our young adults. Vote no on House Bill 2519. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McKay. Tara Beth Brumfield, followed by Amber Perry. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Tara Beth Brumfield, and I'm the Program Development Officer for the June Harless Center at Marshall University, and I direct our early education programs. Our West Virginia Public Pre-K program, the Early Education STEAM Center, has operated for the past eight years inside of Corbley Hall on campus. Three, four, and five-year-olds explore, play, learn, and share the campus with the big kids that they see on a daily basis. The entire Marshall campus is a learning resource for our program. We go on walks, visit the library, we walk to the rec center, use different fields to play on, and visit professors who can support our learning. As I mentioned before, we're housed on the first floor of Corbley Hall with other departments such as the College of Business and English Department and are not a standalone facility. Over the eight years, I can thankfully say we've always felt safe at preschool in Corbley Hall. Our campus police, many of who are here today, has been wonderful to ensure our safety. Our staff has direct access to the MUPD. And if we are ever in need, they come quickly and they help us feel safe. So as you can imagine, when House Bill 2519 was brought up to our attention by a concerned parent, I was blown away, along with my staff, that this legislation was even being entertained. By West Virginia law, anyone able to purchase a gun over the age of 21 can conceal without a permit and without any sort of training. Some students who are on our campus and who are 21 years or older are emotional, they're impulsive, and they don't always make good choices during their college experience. Our campus should be a place that's safe for everyone. This kind of open access to firearms makes our campus less, less safe and increases risk for students of all ages, as well as the faculty and staff. I urge you to vote no on House Bill 2519. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brumfield. Uh, Amber Peary will be followed by Susan Harper. Thank you, Chairman Schott. I have to say, if I'm as a college student, I just I feel like we've been bashed all morning long here. My name is Amber Perry, and most of you know me. I'm no stranger to, to this place. It's my eighth session up here. And today I'm here because I believe that I'm entitled to all of the rights laid forth in the Bill of Rights, even on a college campus. There are many things that I could say and that I would like to say today, but I've decided instead to talk about the WVCDL. I am a lobbyist up here, but I'm a free lobbyist. I'm not paid. No one in our organization is paid. So nobody up here for the WVCDL is here because there's money donations coming to campaigns. We are here because we represent your constituents across the state. 
I am here for the people who are at work right now, who are in class right now, who couldn't be here for whatever reason. That's the reason that I donate my time. That's who the WVCDL is. We are grassroots in its purest form. And I support the bill because I believe that I should have all those rights on campus to protect myself. The campus police on my particular campus, I am a current student, are not everywhere. They're not able to protect me at all times in all places. And all I'm asking is for the ability to do that for myself. I think I deserve that right. In closing, I would like to commend my university president. I spoke with him on a way in here today, and I just really appreciate that he understands there are varied opinions on the campus, and there are students who support the bill. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Perry. Susan Harper, followed by Jim McJunkin. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, honorable delegates. Um, my name is Susan Harper, and I oppose and encourage you to oppose House Bill 2519. I am the mother of two amazing young boys. If guns on campus legis legislation were to pass, my family will not consider sending our children to any West Virginia public colleges or universities for undergraduate or postgraduate degrees. Many of my friends feel the same way. The reasons are simple. Firearms are the leading cause of death for youth and adolescents aged 20, 15 to 25 per a CDC study from 2017. College campuses are rife with risk factors making the presence of guns potentially dangerous, such as binge drinking and the abuse of illegal substances. There's also an increased risk of suicide for undergraduate students who faced a host of, press, of pressures and challenges. <clears throat> Allowing easy access for students to firearms and dorms, frat houses, and classrooms would do nothing but subject them to added dangers. In addition to making students, faculty, and everyone on campus less safe, guns on campus would impose huge financial burdens on West Virginia public colleges and universities who would be forced to find money in an already stretched budget for increased security and would also face increased insurance costs. All of this would divert funds from education, athletics, the arts, and all the other resources that make our state universities great. I would much rather send my children to, children to a private college or an out-of-state college than pay to support guns on campus. More guns will not make West, Virginia, West Virginia's public college campuses any safer. They will create new dangers and huge costs. That is why students, campus, law enforcement, and major universities such as WVU and Marshall oppose this dangerous policy. Young people go to college to learn and to grow. They deserve to feel safe in their classrooms, dorms, on the quad, and football games. Allowing hidden loaded guns into sensitive places on campus will make our children feel less safe, not more. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harper. Uh, Jim McJunkin, followed by William Chedister. Mr. Chairman, honorable delegates, and respected public. My name is Jim McJunkin. I'm a retired intensive care pediatrician, born and raised in West Virginia, went to West Virginia University Med School, and after residency, <clears throat> train, trained at UPMC in Pittsburgh in intensive care pediatrics. This bill, if enacted, would increase potential for gun injuries of many types, especially since rates of crime on West Virginia in your campuses have been low to begin with. Suicide is a special concern that was well described before. Often it's an impulsive act following a breakup relationship or substance use, <clears throat> which are not rare in colleges. Note that West Virginia has the highest suicide rate east of the Mississippi, and that of 100 gun-related deaths per day in the U.S., two-thirds are suicides. Unintentional gun injuries are a very serious concern and seem almost certainly to rise when more guns are placed in the environment. The most devastating unintentional gun injury that I ever saw occurred when a gun was left loaded and improperly stored and an older brother shot a three-year-old through the neck, leaving him permanently quadriplegic, unable to move his arms or legs, 
or breathe, except with a ventilator. That little boy's story is the reason I'm standing here today. In addition to the increased risk of injury, the bill places students and others uh, uh, at risk. It could cost millions if enacted. Arizona considered guns on campus laws, but wisely did not pass this legislation, along with 38 other states, partly due to estimated costs of 13 million in the first year alone, and ongoing costs of 3.1 million annually. I want to quickly address something and then close. When you look at a study such as the Kansas study cited about decreasing crime rates, you need to look at the duration of the study, and that was over less than a 12-month period. There's been a multi-year study done over uh, looking at Colorado and Utah in the same regard, and crime rates did not decrease on those campuses, with suggestion of certain assaults actually increasing. Before closing, I want to say that my stance is not anti-gun, and I appreciate the rich culture of gun ownership and hunting in our state. At the same time, it is worth noting that even Antonin Scalia, in his 2008 landmark Heller decision concerning the Second Amendment, states that our schools are sensitive areas worthy of special consideration in this regard. Because of all these reasons, I strongly ask our lawmakers to oppose House Bill 2519 and move on to other bills that will enhance the health and well-being of our state's most valuable resource, our young people. Thank you, Dr. McJunkin. William Chatterster, followed by Art Tom. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Committee. Um, my name is William Chetister. I am the Campus Police Chief at WVU. I am here to uh, point out a few things that are of concern to me uh, when it comes to the passage of this bill. Uh, as a lifelong resident of Morgantown and a 17-year veteran of the WVU Police Department, uh, a few of the things I see and have concerns about are the cost that it's going to actually create for public safety. We'll have to complete security updates to buildings, additional equipment for officers. We will have to increase staffing. Uh, we will have to look at increasing our presence at events that in the past have only taken a few officers to work. We now will have to have additional staffing to work such events. How officers respond to calls will change. Uh, we will have to look at every call that we take on our campus now as a possible situation where a firearm may be involved, good, bad, or indifferent. And Finally, education and training will be a concern, uh, especially for public safety, to educate and train our campus on what the law will consist of and how it will be structured. I appreciate your time, and thank you. Thank you, Officer Chatterster. Art Tom, followed by Al Kisner. Kisner. Good morning, Chairman, Vice Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Art Tom, and I represent the hundreds of thousands of members of the National Rifle Association and lawful gun owners here in the state of West Virginia. I, too, am a parent of two boys. So one's a senior in high school, one's a freshman. They'll be going on, uh, potentially coming to our colleges here in the uh, state of West Virginia, and uh, are supportive of the bill. In the hearing and throughout the movement of this legislation, you'll hear a tirade of scenarios, how crime will increase, how safety will diminish, how our children will place at risk, and so on. There's only one major problem with this thought process, and that it's not true. It's been proven wrong in every state that has passed this critical legislation. This bill simply empowers men and women to protect themselves from violent attacks while adding additional safety measures for the campuses by allowing only those with state-issued concealed carry permits to carry a firearm on campus. Threats to personal safety don't disappear once you step on campus. Denying women their constitutional right of self-protection empowers criminals and leaves women vulnerable to criminal attack. According to a campus sexual assault study, one in five female college students is sexually assaulted. There is, a clear, there is clearly a reason for women who have valid state-issued permits to carry a concealed firearm to do so on college campuses. Time and again, America has seen violent criminals target their attacks on campuses and other places where law-abiding people are prohibited from carrying firearms. I've heard arguments here today that young people just aren't responsible enough to carry firearms. 
Yet our legislature voted in 2016 to create a provisional concealed carry permit, allowing those 18 through 20 to carry a concealed firearm. Since that time, there have been zero issues. Beyond that, people 18 through 20 have been able to carry openly carry firearms for longer than this has been a state. Members of the judiciary, the NRA, and its members of West Virginia ask for your support on House Bill 2519 during this critical vote. In closing, the NRA agrees with and would like to thank Marshall University on their position as stated in their student handbook. All students should be entitled to the same safeguards of the rights and freedoms of citizenship as are afforded to those outside the academic community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tom. Al Kisner, followed by Matthew Swain. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman and committee members. I'm here representing uh, Montague County Sheriff's Office 